Hey everybody, I want to talk to you today about this really awesome book that I read called Little Brother. It's a young adult novel by Cory Doctorow, um, and it, it's available in all bookstores, on all libraries, it's uh, very easy to get. I have an edition in our class library, and what's also cool is that Cory Doctorow is giving it away to kids for free. Okay? And here's the man himself, and the w way I discovered the book was because I was already a fan of Cory Doctorow's to begin with. He's a really cool guy. He writes, um, and he's one of the co-founders of a cool blog called Boing Boing, which you, should, you could check out. It's called boingboing.com, and has some great news about the world and, and alternative views on, on society. If you're someone that, like, let's say you like rock music or, or, or punk rock music, you probably be someone that likes this book because the subject matter has the energy of, of uh, you know, that sort of, that, that sort of flavor. In, in it, okay? And also, if you are someone that is into hip hop culture, okay, or any sort of alternative culture, okay, that is not um, very well known by a lot of different people, okay, and understood, you might be someone who's into this book because a lot of the topic matter in this book has to do with alternative ways of looking at the world, okay? Also, if you're someone that's ever stood there or sat there and thought to yourself, why am I the only person who thinks this way? Or why am I the only person who, who feels this way about this or that? Okay? You might like this book as well because the main character in this book is someone who um, sometimes feels like he's a bit too smart and different than other people. Okay? And finally, if you're someone who just is the type of person who you know, looks out into space both literally and figuratively and thinks there must be more than this, okay? then you might like this book as well because it, it, it takes you into areas of the world that are a bit different. And here are the basically the main characters. I chose these, uh, these faces from Creative Commons uh, because this is kind of how I, I imagine each character to look. There's Marcus there, the main character, uh, Jose, his buddy, Daryl, his, his, his buddy as well, and Vanessa, his, his other friend. Okay? And Marcus, the main character, is one of those guys who is always in the detention uh, room. He's frequently being sent to the principal's office. Teachers don't really like him very much, uh, partly because he's rude at times, and he can have a negative attitude sometimes, and sometimes he thinks he's smarter than teachers. You know, he's one of those kind of guys. And, and, um, and it's, it's a story about how he gets into trouble with one of the biggest, most powerful, and secret organizations in the world, the Department of Homeland Security in the United States. These are the people that are responsible for for fighting terrorism and making the United States a more safe place. Okay? They are, they're at a high level. And what happens is Marcus gets into trouble with them. Okay? And he ends up being uh, imprisoned by them. And it's a story about how, you know, how he got into this problem to begin with, how he's going to get out of it, who's going to help him, what tools are you gonna, is he going to use to help him. It's kind of like a spy movie or a spy novel. Okay? And really, what I want to, to tell you guys about, for the most part, was the big ideas that I got from this book, okay? And I think there are three main themes that I got from this uh, amazing novel. The first theme that you may or may not be very familiar with is the idea of David and Goliath, okay? So whether you're Christian or not, or whether you're Muslim or Jewish, I'm sure there's a story like this in all different cultures about the underdog, the young boy David, who has to fight the much stronger and powerful Goliath, and what he must do to overcome that amazing disadvantage, okay? And um, in this story, Marcus is like the David, right? And the Department of Homeland Security and the government, they're like the Goliath, that he has to fight himself, and he's just a teenage boy, and they're evil, and he's fighting for good, okay? So it's very much a story about the underdog battling evil and darkness. And the cool thing about it is that he does it through um, his intelligence, okay? Being a really deep thinker and a really good problem solver and someone who thinks really well on his feet. Okay, that's what I love about it. It's not because he has big muscles or because he's really good looking. It's because he's really smart. And the second big theme that I got from this book was the power of technology for freedom and also for suppressing freedom because in this story the Department of Homeland Security and some and some mean teachers at a school and, and, and a lot
lot of different people are trying to repress his ability to use the technology because Marcus he's so he's such a ninja with technology he knows he knows stuff that other people don't know he knows how to hack he knows how to do stuff like that okay and um, and in the story you really learn that technology is very important because it's in the world it's very important that we appreciate our freedom with technology just like these kids in the playground okay they probably don't know how lucky they are to be able to just play in a playground and sometimes we forget that we're lucky to have technology that gives us more freedom to access information and to connect with each other okay and the final probably the biggest theme in this book in my opinion was the theme of friendship okay it comes out really really strong in this book um, how Marcus sometimes he's like a loner like I said but he realizes that he can't really accomplish what he wants to do and save the world without his friends okay and his friends um, are people that sometimes he has fights with and sometimes he gets into conflicts with and has problems with them and there are times in the story where you wonder oh is he really gonna make it through you know are they gonna stay enemies are they gonna stay friends but ultimately they realize that without each other without the love and um, the loyalty and trust and respect between the friends, um, they really cannot win in the end. Okay. So, there you go. David and Goliath, using technology to beat Goliath and, and the power of friendship. Thank you very much.